Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today I'm going to be making a tab book um, inspired by Dina Wakeley's wonderful Demo A Day with Dina um, and I'll leave a link to her page um, below. So she makes this cool little tab book and it's made with individual sheets of paper. Um, she did hers with media board. I'm doing mine with um, some cardboard I had because that's what I had at the time and I'm just starting off um, with some gesso and stenciling through on to each side of my um, bits of card. I'm using the same stencil for each, oh, sorry, a, a stencil for one stencil for two pages if that makes sense. Um, just because I had it out and I had the sponge and it just saved me thinking about it. So basically I've got these 10 little pages um, they are a six size they're about four inches by five inches I think I'm not 100% sure of the measurements there um, you can see, see on the board if you're really interested I didn't measure them I just had an A5 card and I split it in half so um, I just wanted to make a smallish little book so I'm going in with my gloss sprays so um, Dina making hers she did some drawings in the background and she used her gloss sprays because she had them so I thought well why not I've got them let's get messy now you can see here I've actually learned from my mistakes I've cut up a special box to use with my sprays in um, the reason for that is the sprays are amazing but they're also permanent and they do spray everywhere so um, it's a really great way to get over everything if you do hand sanitizer or alcohol spray will work it's hard to get at the moment but um, yeah so you can get rid of it but if you can spray in a box that's just going to make life a whole lot easier for you and basically all I'm doing is spraying over some colors I'm dipping in the different pages um, to get off the excess ink so I'm not wasting anything now the one thing I did need to remember is, is doing this to do front and back um, this is me being a little bit brave. One of the techniques that Dina talks about is actually pouring some of your ink onto the page and letting it seep in and then pouring some more ink over the top. I poured it on one and wasn't quite, oh, I was brave enough to go and do it on another one. Um, but yeah, if you would like to do that, that's fine. It's lots of fun. You can see to get the um, resist effect with the gesso in the background you do have to blot it off with some paper towel so um, I remembered on some of my pages and I didn't on others so you can see there um, I blotted it off and you can see that stenciling come back through so it's a really cool little technique to have with all that extra paint and spray I've got in the background I'm just using up the backs of my pages and going over other bits that have missed out and mixing them up now you can heat if you heat up the acrylic sprays um, individually each layer you can build up the colors if you put them wet on wet they will blend so you do need to have a think about your colors you can see on some of those pages now I'm getting um, a purple color coming through and that's because I've got the pink and the blue and the green sort of mixing together so I'm getting that purpley color um, I quite liked it um, I'm really lucky with the, the set of sprays I have got that um, they're all analogous colors so they're all blue greens apart from the pink so most of them sort of blend together okay anyway without too much of a hassle so I'm just going in and heat setting some of them because I um, wanted to make sure that I wasn't sort of adding anything extra in there you can see I sort of suddenly remembered I didn't have some of the backs done so I'm going back and coloring those and just spraying over the top you can make cool marks the little circles I had there were from the um, top of my um, ink spray so um, just use what you've got around you now obviously I did this it didn't actually take all that long to do um, but it's one of these things that if you're doing something like this work in um, production line so do all your spraying first then go back and do your stenciling and and so on so once I'd finished I went back in with my white gesso again just to add some more stenciling over the top and again like I did with the previous one I'm sort of using the stencils th that I had out um, I chose some and didn't use any more than those if I 
sort of had to sit there and think about it. I'd sort of pull out everything going, oh, is this right here? Is that right there? But just by limiting myself and just grabbing a few off the top and going, yep, that is the ones you're going to use. So for me, I really struggle with white space. This is the way I get white space back in again to my pages, just by adding a little bit extra to it. Now at some stage here, um, the video is going to cut out and start back up again because I managed to knock my entire jar of gesso off my desk and managed to cover the floor, my jeans, my chair, everything. But I did avoid my journals, which is really lucky. So um, there was a bit of a moment of um, lots of swearing and that's where it happened. <laughs> you can see the gesso is now back up on my desk again. Um, yeah, it was uh, a little bit of a worry, but we, we saw it in the end. I've got a lovely white patch underneath where I sit. So here is a close-up of all the pages that I had. And I've laid them out and I'm flipping them over just so I can see what they look like. And now I'm going around and thinking, well, which pages work together well? Am I happy with that? Do they work together? Do they flip well together? Um, so you know, there's purple on that page, purple on that page, so um, sort of matching them up together. They don't have to match, they can all be really different, but um, you've just got a little bit of an opportunity to sort of go through and play with what they look like. So to put the book together, again, I would suggest you go and look at Dina's um, original um, video, which I will link in this um, to the blog post in this description box below. But it, um, she uses um, sticky back canvas to do this. Now I'm using her media tape, which is like a washi, but it is stronger. So masking tape or something like that could work. Basically what you do is you do two tabs on the first page. Then you do one tab on the next page, turn it over and tape it down. So what you're doing is if I fold over one tab like here I'm putting one tab on my next page folding over two tabs so this page gets two tabs so my next page I'm folding over one tab so my next page gets one tab folding over two tabs so my next page gets two tabs you do work out the the um, order in a little while um, you need to make it with even number of pages doesn't matter how many pages you've got in there if you've done it with even number of pages you end up with two tabs on the back so it sort of works out for you in the end um, but Dina does do a much better job explaining it and unfortunately because the um, media tape is actually quite translucent when you rub it down you really can't see the tabs on this page Dina used colored um, sticky back canvas so you can actually see the tabs a lot more clearly in her book but you can see how this little book works together. Now you could certainly leave it like this and have lots of fun with it. You could use it as a little quote book, give it away as um, a gift to someone. Here you can sort of see how it gets that little honeycomb edge when you, you fold it. But because it's me, I had to decorate it because I just need to get my mind off things. So I made the book and I thought, no, nah, I'm going to sit here and decorate it. So I got my box back out again. I had this chipboard heart again from Dina Wakeley and I thought, oh, well, I'll get my sprays out again and spray over the top to make this like little marbled heart. And the good thing about um, doing this is you're using the same colors you've used in the book. So it matches, even though it's going to be sort of random and marbleized, it's going to match. Once I've done that, I decided, well, you've used Dina's technique, <laughs> you've used Dina's product, you might as just well make it a Dina book. So this is heavily Dina Wakeley inspired, um, using all her collage tissues, her stamps and her um, collage faces. So I'm starting off with the front cover with the chipboard heart. I went round the edge of the heart with some gold ink or wax, just to sort of give it a bit of definition. I'm using some gel matte medium to glue down my tissue paper. So um, tissue papers are fairly magic. If you use gel medium with them, and they become translucent and sort of blend into the background. So you get the image, um, but don't really see that it's on tissue paper. I decided as I was doing the front cover that I needed to put some stamping or some definition in the back. Now, I got a little bit carried away with this. And if you go and look at the little clip of my flip through of the before and the after you'll sort of see my after is a little bit heavy handed I have a real difficulty of just leaving things plain and leaving white space on my pages I tend to 
cover up all the spaces with stuff so um, take or leave what you like with how I do this um, yeah just, just a word of caution there I did limit myself to three stamps I have to say that was good um, I love having text on a page so I used um, one of Dina's beautiful text stamps and I've got this sort of random blobby mic and some heights I'm also using two colored inks I end up I think using three because I think I throw a purple in here too basically echoing the colors that I've used in the book so I'm not introducing too many other colors to this and I think that's probably the secret of making something look a little bit seamless even though all the pages are random and different if you're using the same colors or sort of joining up the page these two pages are different but I've joined them up using the same sort of marks over them it kind of ties them together so as I was doing this I decided that I was going to do lots of faces in this book and have it as a little bit of a quote book um, which I quite liked. I'm also on a few of the pages actually gluing some of the collage tissues across the middle of the page and that actually gives the book a little bit more strength. Where the tabs where there's only one tab on a page there's actually a lot of bend on the pages so by having something go across the middle it just gives it a little bit more strength now one of my bugbears about the collage tissues is while i love how translucent they get um if you leave a border around it you do get this sort of white halo effect around the page which i don't particularly like it really doesn't bother most people but for me i just i'd prefer not to have it so i tend to fussy cup cut out around my images fairly closely so I can get rid of that as much as possible. Once I'd sort of got to this page I decided that um, I had the stamped floral piece in the background or the ferny branch thing so I decided I would try stamping over it. To be honest I wish I hadn't because it kind of covered up all the white on the page but you live and learn. This collage tissue that I'm gluing down now looks slightly different because this actually has some of the gloss sprays on the back. Um, luckily the same colours that I've used in the, the book itself so it sort of blends in but if you're sort of, if you weren't doing something like this, sop up any excess spray that you've got with the collage tissues or with tags and so on you've got around and just keep them in your collage pile and they're really great to come back and use again another day. Um, so while it looks like you're using a lot of the gloss sprays you can actually save a lot of it by using it in other projects or coloring other things that you can use in the future i have a whole stash obviously of these collage tissues i don't use the white ones very often so i use the white collage tissues to collect up the excess spray and it works perfectly because the spray is um quite opaque you get a really great resist effect happening with the um, gloss sprays on the white tissue papers so um, if you've got some around have a go with that when I got to the back of the book I ran out of the original faces I was thinking about repeating them again and putting the same faces in the book again I thought no you've got all these other faces so just you know go for it doesn't quite follow in the, the same vein as the other ones but I quite liked how it ended up so and some of these bigger images covered up some of the areas I wasn't quite as fond as so I really didn't like that top right hand corner so having that big face on it sort of really helped cover that up which was good. I decided to go alternate pages to put the faces of the collage on because I thought that I would put quotes on the other pages so um, and I thought this could be like a bit of a art inspiration book so I decided to use create um, creative quotes on my pages which I really enjoyed using when I got to the final page I was sort of working out what I wanted to do because I kind of ran out of images but I really love this large torso so I decided that I would use him or her it's abstract it doesn't have a agenda on this page and again, I'm gluing that across the middle of the page just to give it a little bit more strength um, and hold everything in place. So I quite like this on this page because the left-hand page was quite, quite busy. So having that strong 
black line on that page really sort of work to balance the page out. So going in and trimming it off and then drying it. It is a good idea when you're working like this. You'll notice I've been sort of drying off the pages as I go just to make sure I didn't have any wet gel medium as I was going through because um, obviously you don't want your pages to stick together. And um, one of the questions I have got a lot um, with the gloss sprays are are they tacky do your pages stick together and I haven't found it in all the pages I've used it on I haven't found any that stick together obviously if you had a raised bit of gloss spray that was still a little bit tacky it might glue things together but I haven't found that to this stage so here is the final flip through of the book with the quotes that I've written in I just used a food ball pen to write them in um, eventually I did think as I was going through I should have done some of my own personal journaling but I didn't quite get round to that um, but I quite like it the way it is it's just really really simple on this page I really like the scribbling around that stenciled image it's one of my favorite images so just having that scribble on the page made me happy and I love that quote go to your studio and make art and I again um, emphasize that in the final page of the book which I really loved so I hope you enjoyed this little project and you give it a go yourself the tab book itself is super simple and it's a fantastic little project to do with any tags or anything you've got floating around please check out Dina's original blog on how she does it and how she explains it because it's a little bit clearer than mine and until next time bye for now